who are the Oblate Sisters of Providence. They are a Roman Catholic Women's Religious Institute founded by Mother Mary Elizabeth Lange and Reverend James Nicholas Joubert in 1828 in Baltimore, Maryland for the education of girls of African descent. It was the first permanent community of Roman Catholic Sisters of African descent in the United States. The Oblate Sisters were free women of color who sought to provide Baltimore's African-American population with the education and a core of teachers from its own ranks. The congregation is also a member of the Women of Providence in collaboration. This is the Shalom Kaysen Show, and today's episode is about the Oblate Sisters of Providence. And as always, we're going to start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Amen. All right, so let's talk about the Oblate Sisters of Providence. So let's talk about their founding. James Nicholas Joubert was born in France and worked in Saint-Domingue, but there's an interesting story about him that I actually want to read, which is from the Catholic Encyclopedia. So, um, Reverend Jacques Hester Nicholas Joubert um, belonged to a noble French family forced by the revolution to take refuge in San Domingo. Alone in his family, he escaped from a massacre and went to Baltimore, entering St. Mary's Seminary. After his ordination, he was given charge of the black Catholics of St. Mary's Chapel. Finding he was making no headway as the sermons were not remembered and there were no schools where the children could be taught, he formed the idea of founding a religious community for the purpose of educating these children. In this, he was encouraged by his two friends, Father Babade ba and Father Tessier. He was introduced to four black women who kept a small private school, and one of those women was Mother Mary Lange, who I have a biography about. Go check it out on sdkason.com. Click Black History, and you'll see it. Um, and lived a retired life from the forlorn hope of consecrating their lives to God. Father Joubert made known to them his plans and they offered to be at his service. So I just wanted to take a little sidebar to talk about Father Joubert a little bit. Okay, so um, he entered, let's see, yeah, he entered St. Mary's Seminary to become a Sulpician priest. After his ordination, he was given charge of the black French-speaking Catholics of St. Mary's Chapel, which we talked about. And he was introduced to Okay, wait, boop, boop, boop. Yeah, Father Joubert proposed that they form a religious institute as well as conducting a school. With the approval of James Whitfield, Archbishop of Baltimore, a novitiate was begun. And a novitiate is a period of training and preparation that a Christian novice um, nun has to go through. A little over a year later, the first four sisters of Miss Elizabeth Lange from Santiago, Cuba, Miss Mary Rosine Boyges of Saint Domingue, Miss Mary Frances Balas of Saint Domingue, and Miss Mary Teresa Duchemin of Baltimore made their vows. Sister Mary Lange was chosen superior, and Reverend Father Joubert was appointed director. Pope Gregory the Sixteenth approved the institute on the second of October of eighteen thirty-one under the title of Oblate Sisters of Providence. The sisters opened other Catholic schools for Black. American girls in the city as well as teaching adult women in evening classes and opened a home for widows. The sisters educated youth and nursed the terminally ill during the cholera epidemic of 1832. They provided a home for orphans and sheltered the elderly. The sisters took in washing, ironing, and mending to care for the children of the house. The organization did not consider previous condition of servitude a liability to oblate membership, which means if you're a slave, you are not if you were former slave, you are not barred from being an oblate sister, which many, many orders would not allow black people at all. So it's just amazing that they were able to get their order up and running with no issues. Eight of the 40 women who joined in the antebellum years from 1828 to 1860 had been former slaves. Okay, let's talk about the expansion. By 1910, the sisters conducted schools and orphanages at Baltimore, Washington, Leavenworth, St. Louis, and Normandy, Missouri. Eventually, the Institute founded schools in 18 states. Some missions only lasted a few years, while others endured and changed with the needs of the community. By the 1950s, there were over 300 Oblate Sisters of Providence teaching and caring for Black American children. Four missions began in 1900 when the Oblates opened their first mission in Havana, Cuba. 
The, o the Oblate sisters established seven missions in Cuba, but left in 1961 when the regime of Fidel Castro made it impossible for them to continue their work. And I actually have a friend who's from Cuba, and she said that her parents, I mean, this is a little bit of a sidebar, but she said that her parents were well off in Cuba. And when Fidel took over, they literally had to escape the country. They had to run away, get on a boat as fast as they could, because he was actually killing people who owned land and companies and things like that. He wasn't or putting them in jail or putting him in jail and killing him. This is a firsthand account. I'm, you know, no conjecture here, no guesswork. And I can only imagine what he also did to priests and monks and nuns because any communist regime is not a friend to Christianity. Communism and Christianity do not mix. They never do. So yeah, take it for what you will. In 1903, a convent and school opened on Old Providence Island in the Western Caribbean. Due to extremely harsh conditions, the mission closed after 15 months. The Oblates had missions in the Dominican Republic and opened missions in Costa Rica in 1964, where they continue today. So they still have a mission in Costa Rica. In 1871, the sisters vacated the mother house on Richmond Street because the city needed the property. Well, well, that's, well, that's weird. So in 1871, they left their mother house, which is where a which is basically like their capital there. Wow, because the city needed it. That's interesting. A new location was found on a knoll on what was then the outskirts of the city and a new mother house was built on Chase Street. The sisters continued to operate an orphanage as well as a day and boarding school within the convent walls. The mother house remained on Chase Street in Baltimore until a new mother house was built in 1961, about 100 years later at 701 Gun Road in southwest Baltimore County. It is called Our Lady of Mount Providence and remains the mother house today. Several missions operated on the mother house property, including Mount Providence Junior College from 1963 to 1966. The mother house house houses the administrative offices, a healthcare unit, a novitiate. There is also a novitiate in Costa Rica. And of course, a novitiate is where nuns train. The mother the Mother Lange Guild, supporting the cause for canonization of Mother Lange. She is on her way to becoming a saint, and uh, let's hope that she does soon. That would be really, really cool. Also, uh, Father Augustus Tolton is on his way to becoming a saint, and a few other people I've done biographies on at my website, sdkason.com. Click on Black History, and you'll see all those. You can also click on Biographies. It's there, too. The Oblate Sisters of Providence Archives and Special Collections Library. So all these things are at the Mother House. Offices for the Affiliated Organizations of the National Oblate Sisters of Providence Alumni Association and co-journers of the Oblate Sisters of Providence are located at the Mother House as well. The Sisterhood has operated a child development center and reading and math center since 1972 on the Mother House property. So that's very, very interesting and awesome. In 2005, Camille Cosby, an alumna of a school in Washington run by the Oblate Sisters of Providence, made a donation to the small East Baltimore High School to create an endowment that will pay the tuition of 16 students a year. So that's pretty interesting. The Cosbys made another donation in 2012 to assist St. Francis Academy in building a community center in East Baltimore. So that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, charism. The original inspiration of the Oblate Sisters of Providence is that gift of the spirit so evident in the life of Mother Mary Lange. This charism enables us with total trust in God's providence to bring joy, healing, and the liberating, redemptive love of the suffering Jesus to the victims of poverty, racism, and injustice despite contradictions, prejudice, and pain. And that is a beautiful uh, mission statement. Currently, the Institute has approximately 80 members. The Oblate Sisters continue in Baltimore, Maryland, Miami, Florida, Buffalo, New York, Alahuela, which is in Costa Rica, and Siquiris, Costa Rica. So pretty cool. All right, so that's the Oblate Sisters of Providence. And a quick recap. The Oblate Sisters of Providence were founded in 1828 by Reverend James Nicholas Huber and uh, Mother Mary Lange. And their specific mission, one, was to teach black children. And their second mission was to have a place where black women who wanted to serve God only with all of their time could go and do that. So 
let's talk about what we can learn. Pull out my little moral virtues chart. Let's get rid of this. And here we have the moral virtues, which are prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude. Um, and now I'm going to finish up this video because family's back. They're probably going to be making noise. So what should we be focusing on? It should be justice. Because justice is what we have to do in order to respect the rights of others. And you need to, in order to know how to educate other people or want to have a desire to educate other people, that is justice right there. And that's it for today. That's the Oblate Sisters of Providence. And I will catch y'all next time. And until next time, God bless and stay holy. Peace out.